NetEase, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See, we're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease, highly calculated cannabis delivery. Get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot com. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes, and I'm here to talk to you about weed. As an NBA champ and analyst, I guess you can say I'm an expert in that space. And Ease is the cannabis version of me, and they have you covered with the best delivery service in the game. Seeing the in-laws for dinner, whew, that's a low-dose sativa gummy. Can't stand another Zoom meeting? They're sending in some top-shelf THC beverages. So what are you waiting for? Get up to 30% off your first order with promo code MATT. That's M-A-T-T at Ease.com. Ease, a highly calculated cannabis delivery service. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the program. So we are one week away from Las Vegas opening at 80% capacity. So next Saturday night in Las Vegas, it is going to be an absolute shit show. That's my guess, anyway. With the, the, the city opening back up and these restrictions being lifted, you're already seeing it. I was bouncing around to a different a couple of casinos yesterday doing some uh wagering for the UFC fights tonight and uh I was really 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 shocked by how slammed everywhere it seemed I I went was from the local casinos, you know, the local holes to some of the major hotels on the strip, it was nice to see people back at the tables, at the slot machines, walking around, having a good time. It was uh, very nice to see because still here in Vegas, I mean, it's start. there's starting to be a bit of a recovery, right? You know, certain industries are starting to pick back up and hospitality and entertainment are slowly beginning to fall into line as well. But still there, you know, there's no concerts yet, none of that stuff. And, uh, with all of the people coming in and the shows on the strip getting ready to restart, that only means we're going to have full houses very, very soon and concerts up and down the strip again. Because this last year has been rough. And I'm not just talking about financially, mentally. You know, a whole industry was ruined as far as entertainment goes. And we're talking about people who... It's a career, right? We're not talking about just a job. People have been doing this for 25, 30 years, out on the road with bands, working in houses. You know what I mean? And to have the whole rug pulled out from under you, it's rough. And then you have some jackalopes who sit around and talk nonsense like, well, you might as well just go get another job. Yeah, okay. Where are you going to go get a job that's paying you 37 bucks an hour without any training? You know, it's it's easy for the people that never missed a day's work throughout this whole entire ordeal, all the I-can-work-from-home types who had a bunch of shit to say about the people that had to strap it up every day and put it on the line at work. They had a whole lot to say, didn't they? A lot of bullying, a lot of BS. But that's all going to be a thing of the past very, very soon. Because at least in my field, entertainment, the writing is on the wall for an explosion. Because I've said from the jump, this is going to be like the Roaring Twenties, right? After we come out of this pandemic, I've been saying that for a long time. And I'm sticking to that. I believe that people are going to want to let loose. And what do people want to do? They want to go to concerts. They want to go see DJs. They want to go, you know, to that kind of stuff. That's what people want to do. So the next few years, I have a funny feeling that those of us in entertainment, we're going to be slammed and it's going to be an insane ride. So I'm really glad to see things are opening up here in Vegas and I hope that wherever you folks are at, it's starting to do the same. Now I know in some places it's really bad still. Like in India, I have a friend over in India and it's really bad. It's, they're, they're really going through it over there. And with um, England shutting down travel from India to the UK, 
because they're on the red list now, it's even, you know, a, a lot rougher. So to all of you out there listening, if you're in India or any other country that is still being ravaged right now, hang tough. I wish I had something better to say to you guys. I wish I had some advice to offer. But all I could say is hang tough. You, are, I certainly haven't forgotten any of you. I watch what's going on around the world and it breaks my heart. I wish there was more I could do. I wish I had the money of these scumbag billionaires that we talk about every day so I could really enact some change in the world. But to my friends overseas who are really going through it right now, who are, you know, stuck in a rut maybe, hang in there. Hang in there. There is silver lining in the cloud and eventually all of this is going to blow over as well. So, all right, let's jump into our article for today. Now, we know that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals absolutely shit the bed and dropped the ball. That NPA should have been overturned. There's no reason that that, N- that, uh, that non-prosecution agreement should be live, should be kicking around still. That thing should have been done away with a very long time ago. In fact, it should have never been put on the books in the first place. So, after the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals dropped the ball, you're only left with one other option if you're the survivors, Courtney Wilde, and the lawyers. And that is elevating and escalating it all the way up to the Supreme Court. And that's where I said from the jump that this should end up. And according to a new article from ABC News, that's exactly the path we might be on. So let's jump into this article from ABC News, and let's see what the author of the article, James Hill, has to say. Headline, Case over Jeffrey Epstein's sweetheart deal could be headed for Supreme Court. On a Friday afternoon in July 2008, 20-year-old Courtney Wilde appeared in federal court in West Palm Beach, Florida, demanding answers from federal prosecutors about their investigation of multimillionaire, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein, who allegedly sexually abused Wilde and dozens of other underage girls at his waterfront mansion on Palm Beach Island. Now, right, first of all, what is that, what's allegedly even supposed to mean at this point? Jeffrey Epstein's estate's making these payouts There's no allegedly left with Jeffrey Epstein. You could say allegedly with Ghislaine Maxwell because she's not convicted yet, right? But it's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point that Epstein is guilty of everything that they said he did. Or else, why would his estate be paying out hundreds of millions of dollars? So let's just ax the allegedly part off of Jeffrey Epstein, shall we? Her legal action forced the government's admission that the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami already had reached a confidential deal with Epstein several months earlier without informing the alleged survivors. So, the government was in the wrong. They knew that they had to tell these survivors what was going on, keep them aware of the situation. They didn't do any of that. They completely disrespected the survivors again, disrespected their rights, and absolutely ignored the law put on the books to prevent this exact thing from happening. And then, with all of that information, it goes to the esteemed 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And those windbags, led by their Harvard Pied Piper, Mr. Newsom, decided in their infinite wisdom that the NPA was going to stand, but they're really sorry about it. I mean, really? That's that's what you're going to say to these gals after completely destroying their hopes for justice? Or at least putting uh, a big roadblock in the way? I'm sorry, huh? Well, I have news for you. I'm sorry... 11th Circuit Court of Appeals is not going to cut it. That is not what you're there for.
Her legal action forced the government's admission that the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami already had reached a confidential deal with Epstein several months earlier without informing the alleged survivors. Over 12 years of litigation, Wilde's case ultimately exposed details of the secret negotiations between prosecutors and Epstein's high-priced legal team that led to the controversial agreement. So remember, if it wasn't for Courtney going ham over all of this, we probably would have never even known what the shitbag federal prosecutors and state prosecutors were up to. And that's how they like to operate, huh? They like to operate in the shadows. They like to operate in a manner that is concealed from the rest of us. Like they have some sort of special privilege that's afforded them by their office or their elected position. And the rest of us should just listen to what they have to say because they're so smart. Without our case, probably no one would have seen the non-prosecution agreement, the secret agreement, said Brad Edwards, an attorney for Wilde, and he's not wrong. Without their case, no one would have been none the wiser to this. The government would have just swept it under the rug, and they would have acted like they were the champions, the good guys. We went after Epstein. We did our jobs. No, not really. You really didn't, okay? You've been forced to do your jobs, all right? The public outcry is forcing you to do your job. And it's only a halfway job, by the way, so far. Without that action, nobody would have known just how bad Epstein and his other co-conspirators were. No one would have ever understood the whole story. And it's fact, right? Because when it's... He said, she said... There's, there's gray there. You know, there's uh, room to gaslight people. But when you have court documents and multiple, multiple, multiple dozens coming out with the same story, it's a little bit harder to discount what they're saying. Unless, of course, you're just engaging in cognitive dissonance, which some people just love to be in that state of mind, I guess. But now, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled, in a 7-4 decision, that Wilde's case never should have gotten off the ground. The majority of judges concluded that the Federal Crimes Victims' Rights Act, enacted by Congress in 2004, did not allow Wilde to sue the Justice Department over Epstein's sweetheart deal in the absence of an existing criminal prosecution against Epstein. So, that's their out, right? We always talk about loopholes, and that's another one of them. Another stupid-ass loophole that even in death, these scumbag, so-called elites find a way to wiggle off of the hook. That's how the whole system's set up, folks. It's framed in that exact manner. Made plans for summer child care yet? If not, don't worry. Care.com can help. At Care.com, you can find trusted, reliable, and affordable sitters near you with flexibility that fits your summer plans. And because the best decisions are made with care, 100% of caregivers who use Care.com have been background checked with CareCheck, a key first step for families to make strong hiring decisions. This summer, get help with activities, tutoring, pickups, drop-offs, and more. Sign up now at Care.com. Oh, what, you thought the system was fair? You thought you were going to get a fair shake? You thought the Justice Department was there to protect you? Sorry to break the news to you, folks. That's just not reality. Federal prosecutors drafted a 53-page indictment of Epstein in 2007, but never filed it, opting to forego federal prosecution in exchange for Epstein's guilty pleas to two prostitution-related charges in Palm Beach County Court. So, I mean, talk about the whole thing Stinking from the jump. 53 count federal gets just done away with and state charges are put in their place. Two state charges. Nah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing, nothing to see here, folks. And then you add the amicus brief that was filed on behalf of Courtney Wilde and the survivors by the very people who wrote this law saying that the way the the, the uh, court was interpreting it was incorrect. 
I think I'm going to side with the actual people who, you know, wrote the law in this instance, not the people who are looking at it and using their own judgment to decide what it means. Breaking news, all of you feudal lords sitting in courtrooms around America. Your job is to uphold the law, not to change it in your courtroom to fit your needs. The law is the law. And I don't want to hear about your interpretation of it, okay? Because the government never filed charges against Epstein, there was no pre-existing proceeding in which Miss Wilde could have moved for relief under the CVRA. And the act does not sanction her standalone suit, U.S. Circuit Judge Kevin Newsom wrote in the court's majority opinion. And Kevin Newsom, as you remember, is another Harvard-educated scoundrel. Just another one of the good old boys network. I mean, we probably shouldn't have expected any redress from the 11th Circuit Court, considering where it's located. Newsom acknowledged that the court's decision leaves Wilde and other alleged Epstein survivors largely empty-handed and without any remedy for the U.S. government's alleged mistreatment of Epstein survivors. Yeah, no shit, Mr. Newsom. You could have changed that. You could have made a difference, but you didn't. You took the easy way, right? Oh, I'll, I'll just interpret this the way I... Yeah, yeah, let's do it this way. And that's the problem with all of these judges, it seems. Very few judges that I've, you know, come across in my research or, you know, reading about, they all seem like they're all on a power trip, every last one of them. Like they're all these, these feudal lords, and inside of that courtroom is their fiefdom. And I don't dig it. I really don't dig it. I, I think that there needs to be oversight of these judges, more oversight of these judges, by the way. Wilde had argued for years that the Epstein deal, which also conferred immunity to any alleged co-conspirators, would be declared illegal and torn up. Yeah, it should have been. If we lived in a world with any justice and not a, a legal system dominated by loopholes and back doors, this wouldn't even be an issue. But remember, all of these laws that they put on the books are not there to protect you, not there to make your life better. It's to make their lives more smooth in controlling us. We have the profoundest sympathy for Miss Wilde and others like her who suffered unspeakable horror at Epstein's hands. Okay, and right there the judge is even saying it. Un they suffered unspeakable horror at Epstein's hands. So can we drop the alleged, please? Okay, the judge is even saying it. So can we just drop the alleged nonsense with Jeffrey Epstein? And, so it seems, affirmatively misled by government attorneys, Newsom wrote, Shameful all the way around. The whole thing makes me sick. But not sick enough to do the right thing, huh, Judge? Not sick enough to stand up and do the right thing. I shouldn't be shocked. I mean, you know, Harvard, good old boys, everybody rallying around each other. In a dissenting opinion, Circuit Court Judge Frank Hull asserted that the court's majority decision eviscerates the CVRA. And she is not wrong. Judge Frank Hull has been fired up about this issue from the very beginning. And her dissent has been on point and very, very, very to the heart of the whole entire matter. Hull pointed to language in the CVRA. That's, that she argued allowed for a while to seek judicial enforcement of her rights, if no prosecution is underway, by filing a motion in the district court in the district in which the crime occurred. That is, Hull noted, exactly what Wilde did in 2008. And that's why the, the authors of the, uh, the CVRA, who filed the amicus brief, Feinstein and the others, said the same exact thing. So once again, we, it comes down to one of these judges, Newsom, ruling over the court like it's his own personal kingdom. Miss Wilde has spent 10 years seeking to vindicate her statutory rights expressly created by Congress. Today, the majority tells Miss Wilde and Epstein's other survivors that all of that was for naught, 
since they never had the right to file their motion in the first place back in 2008, Hall wrote. And again, Judge Hall has not pulled any punches here. She has let her colleagues know that she is not happy with this decision. She is not happy with the way the court has ruled here. Wilde's attorneys told ABC News this week they plan to ask the nation's highest court to take up the case and overturn a ruling they contend is outrageous and wrongheaded. Thank thank the maker, right? I said this right away. You got to accelerate this all the way up to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court only takes a handful of cases a year, so there's no guarantee that they'll even hear this case. But you have to accelerate it. There's no way you just take this L, right? Oh, all right, well, that's it. We have no more redress. You know what? You've come this far. You have to go all the way at this point. And I'm very, very happy to hear Brad Edwards talk about bringing this all the way to the Supreme Court. Let's see what they have to say about it. We plan to seek review in the U.S. Supreme Court of this unfortunate, far-reaching decision which makes victims' rights completely unenforceable in situations where federal prosecutors cut a secret deal with wealthy defendants, said attorney Paul Cassell, a former federal judge who, along with Edwards, has spent several thousand of pro bono hours on Wilde's case. And I love that. I'd love to hear that, too. Pro bono work? I, I mean, if I was a lawyer, I'd be looking for cases like this all the time to take on especially if I had already succeeded in my career and I had a bunch of money, like the Suck Squad, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell's team. I'd be looking for people to help, like Khalif Browder and others. But it's all lip service from these kinds of people. They're not interested in helping the poorest amongst us. If they did that, they'd have nobody to lord over. Basically, Cassell added, What this means is if you're rich enough to hire a battery of lawyers to cut a pre-indictment deal, then you don't have to worry about the victims at all. 100%. Where's the lie in that? Mr. Cassell is 100% spot on. Money talks. If you got the right amount of dough and you can bring in the right lawyers who have the right connections, shit's going to be a lot easier for you. The ruling by the 11th Circuit effectively nullifies previous decisions by U.S. District Judge Kenneth Mara in West Palm Beach. Mara ruled in February 2019 that federal prosecutors had reached the deal with Epstein in violation of the rights of Epstein survivors. But as Mara was considering a potential remedies for the government's infraction, Epstein was arrested again in July 2019 and charged in New York with federal conspiracy and sex crimes against minors. So right as the judge was getting ready to make a decision on the NPA, Epstein gets swooped up again and then mysteriously dies in custody, huh? Yeah, nothing to see here, folks. Just keep it moving. I mean, how many coincidences do they want us to just accept? Epstein died by suicide, allegedly, a month later in a Manhattan federal jail, and Mara subsequently dismissed Wilde's case. Yeah, just just so so happened, huh? Jeffrey Epstein sure is a lucky guy, and all of his associates and the people that he was covering for must be real lucky too. He just happens to die, just all of a sudden become suicidal, right on the heels of all of this? Oh, yeah, okay, totally believable. Wilde appealed the dismissal, contending that Epstein's deal should still be invalidated because of the government's alleged breach of its legal obligations to the survivors. Her appeal received support from Senator Dianne Feinstein, California, and former Republican Senators Orrin Hatch of Utah and John Kyle of Arizona, who spearheaded the passage of the Crime Victims' Rights Act in 2004. So there you go, folks. John Kyle, Orrin Hatch, Diane Feinstein. Some heavy hitters. And what they have to say doesn't matter. They wrote the law. Breaking news, 11th Circuit Court. They wrote the law. Probably want to listen to what they have to say, no? In a court filing, the lawmakers contended that the miscarriage of justice in the Epstein case was precisely what the act prevents. Drop the microphone and walk out, okay? In fact... What I think that the lawyer, the lawyers for the survivors and Courtney should do is call Feinstein, Orrin Hatch, and Senator Kyle as witnesses. Bring them 
as witnesses and let them tell the court how the law is supposed to be applied. That's a bit awkward for the court majority to tell us that Congress never meant to do something when the three leading congressional sponsors of that very same act said, mm, yes we did, Cassell said. So again, that's one of that's my biggest contention here. That's my biggest point here. When an amicus brief is filed by three heavy hitters like this, who actually uh, wrote the law, you should probably listen to what they have to say. Once again, the court thinks it always knows better. And I'm tired of the arrogance shown by these judges in the United States. Enough is enough. Cassell and Edwards acknowledge that the odds are against them in their pursuit of review by Supreme Court, which hears only about 2% of the cases presented to it each year. But Wilde's attorneys are also push- pushing for passage of a pending U.S. House bill, the Courtney Wilde Crime Victims' Rights Reform Act, that would amend the, C- the CVRA to better protect survivors. They credit Wilde, now a 33-year-old mother of two, for her perseverance in her protracted legal battle for accountability. So we always talk about what can we do? What can we do? Call your call your congressperson and tell them you want the reformed C, the the Courtney Wild Crime Rights Victims Rights Reform Act amended. Call them and tell them that. Because if we get this law amended, then it opens things up. If the Supreme Court turns us down, then she is 100% all on board for testifying before Congress and making sure this doesn't happen again, Edwards said. Her attitude is, look, I'm proud of the fight. I'm proud of exposing the bad that the government did. She's definitely a fighter. She's not about to quit. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Courtney, neither are we. Neither are we. Because enough is enough. What you ladies have been through, what someone like Courtney has done for all of these years to bring light to this matter that could affect all of us moving forward? That's not somebody you abandon. That's not somebody you, you step back and say, oh, you're on your own now. It's when you bite down on your mouthpiece, move to the center of the octagon, and get busy. Now let's hope the Supreme Court does the right thing here. But until then, I would highly suggest writing to your congressman or your congresswoman and telling them you want this, this, this uh, uh, C, uh, the CVRA reformed. I think that's definitely a good idea. And like I always suggest as well, if you're writing letters to your congressmen or women, I wouldn't be too mean or aggressive, you know? Write them and tell them what you think that they should be doing. Because this law, if this is the way they're going to use it in the court, most certainly needs to be amended. And the only people that can do that, folks are the very same people that we sent to Washington, D.C. So I think it's time to remind them that they work for us. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, folks. I'm not too sure if we're going to have another episode tonight. We'll see where the news is at. But it's looking likely that there'll just be a couple of flashbacks tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll see what we see like usual. I'll be back tomorrow morning, no matter what. And we'll take an accounting of the day then. All right, everybody, I hope you all have a fantastic Saturday. And if you're going out and partying tonight, you know the deal. Do it responsibly. Until tomorrow, folks, have a great day. At Ease, we're all about calculating the best high for you. Ran out of shows to watch for the second time this week? Order an Indica pre-roll. Social distance park hang? Pair that awkward picnic with a vaporizer. See? We're like your weed guy, but 420% nerdier. So just worry about when you're going to take that edible and let us do the rest. Ease. Highly calculated cannabis delivery. 
get 30% off your first order with promo code NERD at ease.com. That's E-A-Z-E dot com. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes, and I'm here to talk to you about weed. As an NBA champ and analyst, I guess you can say I'm an expert in that space. And Ease is the cannabis version of me, and they have you covered with the best delivery service in the game. And if you're still wondering why I want to roll up with these pros, with one click, I can order minority-owned brands from Ease's social equity menu. So what are you waiting for? You miss 100% of the weed, you don't order. Ease, a highly calculated cannabis delivery service. Get up to 30% off your first order with promo code MATT. That's M-A-T-T at ease.com.